Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we've got one of our Battle in the Backlog episodes. This is the series where I look at my backlog and try to complete 10 games and then recount my experiences for you, giving a mini review of the game if you will, letting you know how long it took me to finish and ultimately whether I would recommend it. Now this is the first of these episodes for quite a while because to be honest I've been so busy it's taken me a good while to actually finish 10 games, but 10 games I have now finished and they're here for you to see. So which games have I been playing recently and what do I think of them? Well, let's find out. The first game off of the backlog then was Layers of Fear 2. This sequel offers a lot of the same gameplay beats as the first game in this series, being a first person psychological horror walking simulator, but it does add a new level of threat in that you will now be chased at certain points by a malevolent spirit and will need to run and hide until it passes. I'll be honest, I could have done without these parts, as I felt they slowed the pacing of the game down, and you can actually remove them entirely from the game, which makes me wonder if they were added as a bit of an afterthought to begin with anyway. The ocean liner setting is certainly intriguing and the story, with you being an actor expecting to take a role in a film on said ocean liner, is interesting if a little confusing as you go further in, but the voice acting talent of the great Tony Todd definitely elevates things in this respect, he just has the perfect voice for horror. It took me around 6 hours to finish and I enjoyed the game overall, although not quite as much as the first one, maybe a good one to pick up if it goes on sale over Halloween. Bubble. Look at it shake. The beast! It's awake! Another game I beat recently was Mayhem Brawler, which is a beat em up focusing around three police officers with special mutations. It's standard beat em up fare for the most part and is extremely derivative of Streets of Rage 4 in particular, but its core mechanics are fun and I enjoyed the game on the whole. It does have a few of its own ideas to be fair, you will choose issues of a comic book at the end of each stage which will then take you on a different level, meaning there is some replay value as multiple playthroughs are the only way that you will see all of the stages. It also has what's called the conditions system, which is a set of afflictions your character or enemies can be hit with as you play. There are some positive and some negative. You may become afflicted with the days condition for example, which will make it harder for you to get back up if you are knocked down. This does lead to some artificial difficulty spikes though. One level in particular where practically every enemy had the health regeneration condition and would gain health whenever you knock them down was so frustrating I almost gave up and this one level accounted for almost three quarters of the whole playtime of just four hours. There's fun to be had here but personally I would wait for a sale on this one. Next was an enjoyable run and gun called Mighty Goose. It was very similar to Metal Slug in some ways and you'll use vehicles at certain points within the game, there are buddies to find that will follow you on your way and you can assign points into particular skills as you go along. It only took about 3 hours to finish and was good fun although for the price being asked I think it was around £15, there are probably better alternatives available on the eShop. Again, perhaps one for a sale. I also finished Pokemon Snap recently which took around 10 hours in total. Now I never played the original on the N64 so I have no nostalgia for this version at all and as strange as this will probably sound, I wanted to play it more because I'm a big fan of on rail shooters which I guess this would play a little bit like to a degree except of course with a camera, not a gun that would be carnage. On the whole I liked the game although I did feel as if the photo scoring system was a bit flawed. What I mean by this is there are times when you clearly took a better quality photo than the one you'd taken before, but due to the previous one having another Pokemon in the background somewhere, it scored more points. It's a lovely game to look at and seeing the creatures in their natural habitats was a pleasure, although the fact that there was some free DLC added just after I finished the game and it didn't tempt me back in probably tells its own tale. A good game, fans will absolutely love it for sure, and one that I'm happy to have experienced, although I don't see myself returning to it much in the future. Yeah. 
The game that took me the longest to complete out of these 10 games on the list and coincidentally another Pokemon game, the next one was Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Now I'm not the biggest Pokemon fan I have to say but I do enjoy the generation 1 games and had a lot of fun chipping away at this one whenever I had a spare bit of time. It took me about 28 hours to finish but that was spread over a good couple of months. I actually picked this one back up because my daughter started playing it and was asking for help every so often and it kind of got me back in the mood for playing it myself. We played our own separate save files comparing progress as we went along. Now I didn't mind the removal of battling in terms of catching Pokemon so much I must say, plus the inclusion of visible Pokemon on the game screen rather than having random battles was a blessing for me, especially when it came to those caves. A new feature that I didn't enjoy so much though were the conditions set before you could enter a gym. I don't remember these being in older versions and they range from silly ones like ensuring you had a super effective Pokemon in your party for the gym leader you were about to fight, I mean what's wrong with letting people learn the hard way and lose these days and there was one that made you have a certain number of Pokemon before you could enter. Now for some people this wouldn't be an issue at all I'm sure but I don't play Pokemon games like that preferring instead to catch a select few and build my ultimate team quite early. This led to a couple of hours of having to catch another 15 or so Pokemon that I'd never use just to then fight a gym leader that I beat quite comprehensively. It felt like filler and was incredibly tedious. That aside though, I really enjoyed this game actually, especially playing it at the same time as my daughter, seeing how our teams differed and so on. And for the record, my winning team consisted of Pikachu, Villaplume, Jinx, Slowbro, Venomoth and Moltres. I also finished Troberbrook, which is a point and click adventure game set in an alternate 1960s Germany. It's full of humour, has a heavy Monkey Island vibe in that respect and I really enjoyed the story and the characters you met along the way. I also appreciated how most of the puzzles were fairly logical and it avoided the huge leaps of logic that some of the classic games in this genre were known for, although some of these did start to creep in towards the end and I wonder if that was done to pad the runtime a little. The backgrounds were all handmade models and they look absolutely fantastic. It really is a labour of love and I believe that you can find the physical version for quite cheap these days. Now I actually began playing this game ages ago, I'm talking about a couple of years ago, but I hit a glitch where a hook that I needed to attach something to just wasn't where it should be. I checked reviews and gameplay videos and no one else seemed to have this problem, so I contacted the dev team and they actually patched it, and fair play to them for doing so for something that clearly wasn't a widespread issue amongst players. I just forgot about the game to be honest, but when I did pick it back up, I finished it off and I think it took about 7 hours in total, and I would definitely recommend this game to fans of the genre. Well yes, your whistle. This is not my whistle. Not your whistle? Of course this is your whistle, your whistle. <laughs> I'm sure I'd recognize this whistle, if it were my whistle. I left you something completely different. Right. I also finished the story for Mortal Kombat 11 as well as the Aftermath expansion. I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan both in terms of the games themselves and the lore and I loved the rebooted storyline that began in 2011's Mortal Kombat. I liked how it took note of everything that had come before but then wove a new timeline from that. I wasn't as keen with Mortal Kombat X's 25 years later take although I loved the gameplay in that game and whilst Eleven builds on this story it adds a time travel element which sees popular characters returning and I did really enjoy the direction that was taken. Aftermath is paid DLC although I believe you can get a version of the game these days that includes it too and it was actually a lot more integral to the overall story than I had expected and it looks as if the events of Aftermath will be canon for any new iteration. The game itself is fantastic, although it does look incredibly blurry in handheld mode, which is where I spent the majority of my time, but this does allow the game to run at 60 frames per second. Now personally, I would just never get to play games like this anymore if it required the big screen due to having kids and whatnot, so the hitting visuals was a necessary evil for me to be able to play the game and enjoy it so much, but if you do have the option of playing it elsewhere, it's probably the way to go, especially when you consider the huge download required to play it on the Switch, even if you buy the physical version. The second biggest time sink on the list is Puzzle Quest The Legend Returns. The Puzzle Quest games have been very popular over the years and I had one of them on the DS back in the day. This version has some extra content included but it is the same general idea as it's always been which is taking it in turns against an AI opponent to drain them of their health by matching coloured orbs on your side of the screen. There's a lot more to it than this though as you will level up 
The coloured orbs you get rid of will then feed your mana and you can use this to do spells against your opponent and it does all get very difficult in places. You will need to complete quests, both main story quests and side quests, and will move around the map from town to town as part of this process. My biggest gripe with the game is that you will run into enemies on the map that initiate random battles. You can't avoid these as you follow a predetermined path, and sometimes getting from point A to point B whilst attempting a main quest could lead to four or five battles. This on top, of course, of any battles that the quest itself demanded. This led to me becoming quite fatigued with the game at times and having to put it down for days at a time just to avoid burning out on it. It's a shame as without this I would have enjoyed the experience a lot more, but even with that said, I did still enjoy my time with it. In hindsight though, I probably should have played it for smaller chunks over a longer period of time. I think my overall opinion would have been a little higher had I done this. The most recent game I completed was Act Razor Renaissance. This was for review and I will just say now that any reviews of any of these games in this video will be in the top in comment. I know this game seems to have divided fans of the Super Nintendo original, of which I am one by the way, and whilst I understand the criticisms, I mean I made a fair few of them myself in my review, I have to say I absolutely love this game and was quite sad to see it end. I could get to the very last phase of the final boss back in the day but could never beat the game so to beat this remake was a nice bit of closure, maybe I'll try the original again one day and whilst the new tower defence elements upset the perfect balance of platforming and city building the original had, I did like that owing to the defeat conditions changing between sieges you needed to rethink strategies or move defensive buildings around at times. This kept these sections a little more fresh than perhaps other people have found them. It took me about 17 hours in total to complete and hopefully this will get a physical at some point as I would definitely grab that too. Judging by the last few Square Enix games though, such as Legend of Mana and Saga Frontier, if it does it may well be exclusive to Asian regions which would be a shame. And the final game for the 10, and as I always do, I try to clear a game from my youth that I never beat back in the day using either the NES or Super NES online app, and this time around it was Joe and Mac. This was actually one of my favourite platformers on the Super Nintendo once I got used to the controls back then, which are a little awkward, but I could never get past the last level. Well, after a couple of game overs this time round, I finally managed to get all the way through it and make no bones about it, this game is hard. Not quite as difficult as the sequel which I also beat a few months ago, but the last level and boss can see hours worth of work undone fairly quickly. I love the prehistoric setting and the larger than life dinosaur bosses, and I think with all the game overs counted, it probably took me about two, two and a half hours to finish. It's well worth a play if you do have the online Super Nintendo app. So there you have it, another 10 games checked off the backlog. Now a big part of what makes this series so enjoyable for me to do, apart from it being like therapy and recounting my experiences with some difficult games at times, is hearing what games you have completed yourselves, so please do stick all that information in the comments section. Not only is it really enjoyable for me to read, but also it will help other people to see games they might not have heard of, whether they're worth their time and of course money. I can't do this series as often as I would like because obviously it takes a long time to finish 10 games. So I hope you do enjoy the episodes when they do come around. Please do give it a like if that is the case. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and as always, happy gaming.